Immune checkpoint protein. Part 1, Immune System. The immune system is made up of a network of cells, tissues, and organs that work together to protect the body from harmful things like germs, viruses, and diseases like cancer. To function properly, an immune system must detect a wide variety of agents, known as pathogens, from viruses to parasitic worms, and distinguish them from the organism's own healthy tissue. After first finding a foreign substance, the immune system takes action to destroying foreign substance and abnormal cells, including cancer cells. There are two main parts of the immune system, one, humoral, also called antibody-mediated, in which B cells make antibodies that identify and destroy foreign substances, two, cell-mediated, in which T cells identify and destroy abnormal cells including those that are cancerous. Both an overactive and an underactive immune system can be harmful. Disorders of the immune system can result in autoimmune diseases, inflammatory diseases, and cancer. Immunodeficiency occurs when the immune system is less active than normal, resulting in recurring and life-threatening infections. In human, Immunodeficiency can either be the result of a genetic disease of the use of immunosuppressive medication. In contrast, autoimmunity results from a hyperactive immune system attacking normal tissues. Part 2, Cancer and Immune Response Cancerous cells are actually quite common in the body. Normally, our immune system is, like it's supposed to, able to destroy cancer cells in our body, however, sometimes cancer cells can adapt and mutate, effectively hiding from our immune system, allowing cancerous cells to grow and spread. This is why tumors can develop and become a threat to our health. Part 3, Immuno-Oncology Immuno-oncology is an innovative area that promotes the body's own immune system fight cancer, which modifies the immune system to recognize the tumor as a foreign substance to the body, and needs to be attacked. Compared with current treatments for cancer, such as surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation, immuno-oncology allows cancer cells to be targeted, leaving the rest of the cell unharmed, and it also has a fewer limitation on the stages of cancer. There are several immune oncology treatments are available now, such as immune cell therapy, cytokines, monoclonal antibodies, cancer vaccines, and checkpoint inhibitors. Here we are discussing on immune checkpoint proteins and their inhibitor drugs. Part 4, Immune Checkpoint Proteins Immune checkpoints are regulators of immune activation. They play a key role in maintaining immune homeostasis and preventing autoimmunity. In cancer, to eradicate tumor cells and induce anti-tumor immunity, T-cells are able to recognize tumor antigens presented to T-cell receptors by antigen-presenting cells. After binding to TCR, a second signal, co-stimulatory signal, is needed for T-cell activation. The co-stimulatory signal comes from the binding of the CD28 molecule on T cells with its ligand, B7 molecules on APCs. After CD28 binds to its ligand, on the surface of APCs, T cell proliferation is activated to enhance immunity. Cytotoxic T lymphocyte antigen 4 and programmed death 1 transmit inhibitory signals when bound to their ligands, B7-1 or 2 and PDL1 or L2, respectively, on APCs or tumors. Such protein molecules involved in immune regulation are referred to as immune checkpoints. Immune checkpoint inhibitors were developed to control immune escape tumors. Checkpoint inhibitors can block inhibitory checkpoints, restoring immune system function. The most widely studied immune checkpoint inhibitors are Antitla-4, anti-PD-1, 
and in CPDL1 monoclonal antibodies which target the T-cell regulatory pathways to augment anti-tumor immune responses. Glifor and CD28 are homologous receptors expressed by both CD4 plus and CD8 plus T-cells, which mediate opposing functions in T-cell activation. Both receptors share a pair of ligands expressed on the surface of APCs. The process of T-cell activation is tightly regulated by co-stimulatory signals for full activation, and it is also regulated by co-inhibitory signals. The main co-stimulatory signals for T-cell activation are from the B7-1 or B7-2 molecules on APC, which can bind to CD28 on T-cells. After binding to its specific antigen ligand, the resulting TCR signals in conjunction with the co-stimulatory signals from CD28 and B7 interaction lead to full activation of T-cells and production of cytokines. In contrast to CD28, CTLA4 delivers an inhibitory signal, and it has a much higher affinity for B7 than CD28. Thus, CTLA4 competes for binding to B7, and thereby prevents CD28-mediated T-cell co-stimulation, and also inhibits T-cell activation. A number of different models have been proposed to explain the mechanism of CTLA-4 function. The simplest of these involves competition between CD28 and CTLA-4 for ligand binding, which has been proposed alongside other cell intrinsic inhibitory signaling models. CTLA-4 has a higher binding affinity for B7 ligands than CD28 which binds these B7 proteins with approximately 20 times greater affinity and can outcompete CD28 for binding, leading to attenuation and termination of T-cell responses and establishment of tolerance. To minimize the development of autoimmunity, CTLA-4 is predominantly found in intracellular vesicles in FOXP3 plus Treg cells or activated conventional T cells. This localization is due to the constitutive endocytosis of CTLA-4 from the plasma membrane and results in approximately 90% of GLA-4 being intracellular. One molecular mechanism that is consistent with a dominant cell extrinsic role for CTLA-4 is the physical capture of CD80 and CD86, and their subsequent removal from APCs, a process known as transcendocytosis. The concept of using immune checkpoint inhibitors to break T-cell dysfunction in tumor patients appears to be an intriguing approach to cancer therapy. This was first demonstrated by the success of ipilimumab, an antiklaformab, resulting in the approval of ipilimumab by the FDA for advanced melanoma. Initially, PD-1 was demonstrated to be a receptor for cell death. However, the PD-1 pathway was later found to play a regulatory role in inhibiting T-cell activation and restraining T-cell function. In contrast to CTLA-4, PD-1 predominantly regulates effector T-cell activity within tissues and tumors as opposed to regulating T-cell activation in lymphoid organs. While CTLA-4 mainly affects naive T-cells, PD-1 is primarily expressed on mature T-cells in peripheral tissues and the tumor microenvironment. It is also expressed on other non-T-cell subsets including B-cells, professional APCs, and natural killer cells. Cells from many different human tumors can evade host immune surveillance by expression PDL1 on their surface. Expression of this immune checkpoint ligand by tumor cells is thought to be induced by an anti tumor immune response. Tumor infiltrating lymphocytes recognize tumor antigens presented by tumor cells, tumor stromal cells, and APCs, and subsequently release of IFN gamma to induce PDL1 expression in these cells resulting in an adaptive immune resistance microenvironment. In contrast to the positive co-stimulatory signal delivered by CD28 receptors, PD-1 delivers a negative signal when bound to its ligands, PDL1 and PDL2. PD-1 suppresses T-cell activation through the recruitment of phosphatus SHP2 and the subsequent inactivation of ZAP70, which plays a critical role in T-cell receptor signaling.
Given the expression of PD-1 on tiles and the upregulation of PD-1 ligands on tumor cells, an anti-tumor host immune response has a foundation. Antibody blockade of PD-1 and its ligands leading to enhanced anti-tumor immunity in mouse models shows that targeting PD-1 and other immune checkpoints is able to reverse this dysfunctional state and reinvigorate T-cell activity in chronic viral infections and cancer. There are other immune checkpoint proteins, such as LAG3, TIM3, and KERS, all are the immune suppressive checkpoint proteins. Gitter and 4-1BB, both are the immune activating checkpoint proteins. Part 5, Immune Checkpoint Therapy Immune checkpoint blockade is game-changing and revolutionary in at least in two senses. First, the target for therapy is on immune cells but not tumor cells. Second, the approach is not to attack tumor-specific antigens but to remove an inhibitory pathway. Recent studies demonstrated that immune checkpoint inhibitors are able to induce durable, long-lasting cancer control. These inhibitors have shown promising efficacy in melanoma, renal cell carcinoma, NSCLC, and bladder UC. As in the case with immunotherapy for other types of cancers, these drugs show limited response rate, but the efficacy in achieving long-lasting benefits for some patients has changed the paradigm of cancer treatment. However, we also need to notice that immunotherapy, helping to prompt an immune response, can attack healthy cells as well as cancer cells. Certain side effects may be experienced, including digestive tract symptoms, loss of appetite, fatigue, and flu-like symptoms. Thanks for your watching.